uh, welcome to our webinar. We are really happy to uh, to be here uh, with you today. So, um, as you've noticed, we are three top vendors of the Atlassian Marketplace, uh, hosting this webinar. So, Comunardo, Coty Labs, and ourselves, Taser. And today, we'll show you how you can uh, add structured data to your Jira and Confluence uh, instance. So. Uh, thank you uh, to all of you for being here. So before starting the webinar, as you realized, you are all in mute mode, but please feel free to ask your question on the chat box. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation where each vendor will have time to answer your, your question. Great. So um, before starting, I just want to introduce you um, the speakers. So I will start with myself. I'm Flora, I'm the head of marketplace sales at Dazer, and today I'm with my colleague uh, Fede, who is in charge of our customer support department. So today we'll show you how to transform Jira into a productive project tracking and reporting tool, uh, especially thanks to, to our app pro field. Then you will have Dan, product manager, along with Maiken, marketing co coordinator, who will explain you how to get the insight you need with dynamic dashboard and reports powered by the app Rich Filters for Jira dashboard. And finally, David, co-head of product at Comunardo and Duela, product owner. They will detail you why an organized wiki is important for your teams and how you can create it by using the power of, um, the power of metadata, metadata for Confluence. So I will start now with, uh, with Profield. So I'm really excited to show you our app. Uh, Profield can help you to maximize your project tracking in Jira. So Profield was recently listed as a staff pick in the marketplace. So we are really happy to show you how it works today. Great, so before starting with the demo, I would like to remind which problem we are trying to solve here thanks to Profield. Well, it is a fact that over the last 10 years, Jira became the most powerful issue tracker product of the market. So as you know, Jira is ideal for any team to get every relevant information in a unique place. But if you think about it, this added value is always and only from the issue level. Okay, so that's when we've started to wonder how to go further than this issue level and provide some answer from a higher perspective, where you could track, classify, and categorize Jira project data. So basically, Profit was made so you could finally be able to do some Jira project tracking and understand a bit better what's going on into Jira instance. Talking about project tracking, we'd like to ask you uh, really briefly some um, question. So if you can tell us what's really important when we talk about um, Jira project, and um, we would really appreciate that. So I will let you a few seconds to, um, to answer um, if you don't mind. So, thank you. I can see you are pretty <laughs> reactive on this one. Great. So, just for for us to understand exactly when it's important, when we what's important when we talk about Jira project, because we know not a lot of, uh, not all the company at least using Jira are using project, and that's why we are trying to improve this uh, this level. Perfect. So, I will uh, just end uh, the result the poll. Great. And we will focus now on, um, on Profil. So um, just so you know, Profil is available for cloud data center and server. Um, I must say that not all the features I'm going to show you today are available for the cloud version yet, even if our product team is really working hard on, on this part. And uh, it's part of the strategy to improve the cloud version this year. Okay. And uh, if I had to sum up what is Profield, I would say that our app is a Jira project tracker. Okay. That helps you to control and manage Jira project data and get a better control in a Jira project. Great. So let's see how we pretend to do some uh, project tracking thanks to Profield. Well, I must say that basically all the features we have created in the past few years help our users to improve the project tracking. So first you've got the, the data. So data is a key focus when using Profield, thanks to the ability to create custom field on your project. Okay, I will show you later how it works. Then you've got notifications. So the same way you can be aware of an issue change in Jira, you will be able to subscribe to any project that matters and be notified of any relevant change. Then you can also operate on your project, especially thanks to one of the best features that offer Profil, which is the bulk operation, um, that helps you to do massive changes on a large amount of project. Then we have also created different views for our users to display those projects. So originally we had the list view, 
And more recently, we also launched the release view, where basically you can see a timeline of all your project version in Jira. Thanks to Profit, you can also do, do some follow-up on your project. So you are able to track information that matters to you. So you won't miss any relevant information around your project development. And last but not least, the reporting. So I think we all agree that the reporting part is by far one of the most important when we talk about project tracking. Uh, so I'm going to show you during the demo how uh, to do um, to get real-time reporting uh, on your project thanks to uh, to our app. Great. So let's start with the the demo. So for this demo, we're going to be Ada. So Ada, she's a project lead. So we're going to enter in Jira as Ada. So all the gadgets you're going to see on the dashboard, they are profit gadgets. Okay. So they are uh, focusing on on project. But now we're going to go in the project tab. And we're going to look for, so you got, you got, you've got either view all project or the different list to display your project data, but we're going to focus on view all project. So here you've got the project navigator. So what um, can profile uh, improve is the user experience when we talk about project navigation. So you can look for custom properties, for example. You can do also some advanced search to look for your project. Or you can do also basic search the same way you can do in Jira. So this time we're going to look for Ada's project as a project lead. So we're going to select Ada and we're going to go in the programming language filter and select Java because we only want to see Java uh, project. Perfect. So once uh, we've done the search, then we can add some more uh, criteria on your, on your view. So we can add programming language. We can add project status. Or priority. So those are custom properties created by uh, thanks to Profield. So we're going to clean a bit the screen so the view is much easier to read. And here it is. So here you've got your 17 Java project. Obviously, natively Java uh, Jira doesn't offer you the ability to see that. Then you can also save the filter. So we're going to name it my Java project. So Obviously, you know already this uh, feature for issues, so we've uh, done it for project. Um, perfect. So you, you can also manage your filter. So if you go to my filter tab, you can manage your filters. So you will see um, all your filter you, you, you would have previously created. When was the last time someone looked at it? If it's shareable or not? If there is someone following um, your, your filter also? But let's go back uh, now to something um, that I wanted to, to show you. So this is the, that was the list view. Okay, so you've seen all your, your list. And now we're going to focus on the other view that we've launched, which is the releases one. So basically here you can see a timeline of all your project version. And you can select the time frame that matters. So you can select any date that you want to focus on. Perfect. And you can um, scroll and expand and see more version of one of your, your project. And if you put your mouse here, here it is, you can see like a pop up window with more detail, like uh, the start date, release date, the progress also of your release. And you can also change the dates. So changing the date can be really important for a release manager, for example, like if you can check like there is a red cycle, so it's on and release. So I'm going to change the date so it will be uh, up to date. Great. So this feature is great for any software team, but also a marketing department that can look for the next release and they don't have to ask to the release manager, for example. You can also look by um, status, version status, I can release, release. And, um, and yes, so that was the, the releases view. We are trying to improve the, the views. So that's uh, the two we are offering right now. So now I would like to, to show you how you can receive notifications. So it's really easy. You can create a new subscription. In that case, we're gonna call it, name it the weekly subscription. And we're gonna say we want to receive an email um, around the changes that have been made of my project every Monday at 8 a.m. Great, and you've got 
several options or to include our project field or to highlight a dated value from the last email. We're going to pick this one. You click on schedule so your notification is created. And the same way you can see all your past filters, you can also see all your past subscription and manage them directly from here. But again, uh, okay, now that we've got the, the notification, we're going to create uh, and do some changes, okay? So let's go back to the list and we're going to use the bulk operation option. So here um, you can see several options. So you can do um, massive changes, like you can change project field, delay project, assign new role, lead, layout, category, or component. But in that case, we're gonna say we want to change the project status of our 17 project. Great, so you can see on the back they're on already, and we want to put them on ongoing. Click on next. You're gonna change 17 project. And here it is. So this is uh, really easy, as you can see. So you can also expand, scroll down, and see the entire list of projects that you've just uh, modified. Great. But OK, now that I've made the change, what happens? So on next Monday, you would receive this email. OK, so you can see on the screen, there is a list of the, of the project, and there is the updated values, OK, with the past value, with the, the new one. Great, so um, let's focus now a bit more on the bulk operation because it's one of the features most used and loved by users, especially the Jira admin that uh, save a lot of time using it. Okay, so I would like now to add new uh, user across my portfolio. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go in bulk operation feature again, and this time we're gonna select um, the role option. And we're gonna say that we want to add, so Next, we're gonna add Alvaro, for, uh, for example. We can add a few other users, Carlos, Diana, and David. Perfect, so those four guys, now they will be developer across your Java project. Perfect. So as you can see, this is, that was quick. Um, and this is a, a really good way of saving time when you manage a lot of projects. So now we'd like to focus on one specific project. We're gonna pick this one, City Connect. And what I'm gonna show you is the layout. It's basically the base of uh, profile because directly from here, Ada, she can change and add any information that matters, okay? She can select any custom field or native field. And then she can add information on those fields. She can add, for example, Guillermo. She will add uh, him on the finance department. One of his business goals could be um, the market expansion, for example. And he will use it as a Kanban bond. Great. So we'll go back to those uh, change later. But, but again, this is really important because you manage all your project directly from, from here. You can also see the history. So it's a, it's a really good way to get some insights uh, around your project. You can see, for example, that Laura, she has made a change. She changed uh, the statue of your project when. Um, so, so again, it's a, a good way of following up on your project. And the last uh, feature I wanted to show you is the watch project, because it's the second way of receiving notification around your project. So remember the change we've made at the beginning? Well, you would receive this kind of email. <clears throat> so that's an email showing all the updated value around your City Connect project. So you can see again the, the past and the new value. Great, so now I think it's time to show you the last feature I wanted to uh, explain, which is the reporting one. So we are really happy about this one because we just improved the gadget we are offering. So if uh, we decide so, to go on uh, any dashboard, so for example, the project tracking dashboard that we would have previously created. So all the gadgets you're gonna see, they are coming from profiles. So let's add a new one to show you how easy it is to configure it. So you can either look, uh, pick uh, the pie chart from here, or load the gadget or the search bar, up to you. But let's pick this one. Right, so we're gonna say we want to see all our Java projects, but this time by priority. So let's um, go back to the um, My Java project filter 
and we're going to name it um, really descriptive title like my Java project by priority. Priority, okay. And then you're going to select the project field that uh, matter for your gadget. So in that case, that would be the priority. Then you can uh, sort uh, your project for value only for priority, like depends on what you want. So we've really improved this part also with all the color that you can uh, select. You can also choose to custom your color and get your company's color. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's save it. And here it is. So here you've got like a real time breakdown of all your Java project by priority, which is great because you can see the percentage per priority. You can see also the number of issues. You can also export uh, your gadget either in PDF or Excel. And they're also actionable, which is the, the new feature we have integrated. That means that if you click here, here you are, you can see all the issues related to the to the priority. So apart from adding new gadget, we also integrate with Easy BI, uh, which is a really powerful uh, BI report, uh, reporting tool. And that gives you a much more robust and complex um, project reporting. But talking about integration and before letting uh, Dan explain you a bit more about which filter, I would like to do like a quick um, a presentation of the integration of Profile with uh, Rich Filter, which is an app that helps you to get interactive uh, dashboard and report for timesheet. So this integration is done thanks to the ability to do map field to Jira. Okay, so that's the only requirement to use this integration. So I will show you a quick example of this integration based on the project status field, which is, as you can see on the screen, map into a Jira custom field. Great. So we would have uh, put some uh, insights, so different status, ongoing, ready, discovery. And now uh, let's do and see how it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to search all our issues and we're going to save the filter. So let's name it all issue. Perfect. So once we've done that, you can create a new rich filter. Okay, and this rich filter, we're going to name it um, Pro Field and Rich Filter. So obviously, Dan will explain you with much more details, but I just want to show you how the result looks like. Then you can pick your filter or issue. Great. And then you can see on the, on the left all the configuration available thanks to Rich Filter. And we're going to pick this one, the Dynamic Filter 1. And we're going to focus on the project status which is a custom field ruled by a pro field. Great, so now we're gonna add new gadgets, new filter gadgets. So first we're gonna pick the controller and then the pie chart gadget. Great, so both of them bring different options. So again, really easy to configure it. In that case, we're going to pick our filter and we're going to save it. Same for pie charts. So we're going to um, focus on projects. And we need to put the, the rich filter, right? And now that is done. Awesome. So what is great here is that um, you can see all your issue, obviously, but you can also um, and by per project, but you can also select different project status. So let's say you only want to see discovery and um, ongoing uh, project, for example. So here it is. So that's a, a really great tool if you uh, need to do some reporting on your project level again. So uh, I think you've understood how easy the integration um, and the uh, input of that and the the, the benefit of the integration would be uh, to get advanced statistic based on project data. Great, so I think I'm done here. So Dan, if you want to uh, take the mic, uh, it's all yours. I cannot hear you. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Flora, for the for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Dan. I'm. Uh, can you hear me now? 
my name is uh, my name is Dan. So I'm a product manager for Rich Filters for Jira dashboards at Coty Labs. The name of my presentation today is how to get the insights you need with dynamic dashboards and reports powered by Rich Filters. Um, so first a few words about rich filters um, it is an app available on the atlassian marketplace it is basically a toolbox for jira dashboards it allows you to build uh, dynamic interactive dashboards we've just seen a quick example in the presentation of flora and to provide real-time reporting to to your users the main functional blocks i would like to focus on today are the filtering and navigation functionality the app provides the real-time and interactive experience you can get with uh, rich filters it's powerful statistics and uh, reporting engine. And we'll also see an example in uh, Confluence, okay? Because all the dashboards you're going to see in Jira, you should know that you, you, you can have them available in, um, in Confluence to, to pull real data, from, real data from your Jira instance. And because we're talking about rich filters, we need to talk about rich filter extensions too, okay? These are separate apps also available in the marketplace which can be installed on top of the main application, on top of the rich filters for Jira dashboard application and add new specific functionality, such as PDF reporting or service desk specific functionality like uh, reports on SLA fields and time tracking, um, time tracking functionality. Okay, if you, if you do time tracking and you'd like to build uh, dashboards based on work logs. And Let's see now a few examples directly in a, in a demo instance, okay? So this is a Jira dashboard, which uh, you are most likely already familiar with. This is a normal Jira dashboard, but the gadgets are our gadgets, okay? And you will see a special type of gadget, which is called controller, okay? And the controller allows us to control the other gadgets. For instance, in this dashboard, I have three projects. If I click on one of the projects here, all the other gadgets will refresh and will start to, to, to show metrics and data based on that particular project, okay? So now this is a dashboard for this particular project. If I click on assigning, let's say I'm the manager of these people here, I select them. Now I see the issues of this assignees in this project, okay? So now this is a, uh, this is a dashboard for, uh, for, for this team working on this project. You probably understood already the idea is that instead of building one dashboard for each team, for each project, for each combination of teams and projects, middle manager and individual contributors, you build only one dashboard, which replaced all of that. You will see that we have many types of filters here. We have like um, on off buttons like this based on JQL. Okay, the JQL here is priority in highest high. If I, uh, if I click on this button, it is uh, the JQL is applying all the gadgets. Okay, this is very similar with the, uh, agile uh, quick filters, uh, you, if you are familiar with, um, with agile boards. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, dynamic filters for uh, option fields. You can also then filter on uh, text fields like uh, summary. If I write here LDAP, then I will see only the issues that contain this keyword. You can filter on uh, date fields or on number fields or as you have just seen in the example provided by Flora on uh, fields uh, provided by, um, by, third, uh, by, by application, third party applications like, uh, like pro fields. You also have a, a special type of uh, filter which is called smart filter, okay? So this is based, um, this is a drop down showing options, related, uh, related uh, options uh, based on JQL filters, okay? And uh, for instance, here, this is how I have implemented the idea of team. I have the green team and I have the JQL behind this assigning in and I have a list of users. Uh, and this is how I have implemented the idea of a team. And now I can, uh, I can filter on that particular team. Uh, if all this is not enough for you. You can also write your own JQL directly in the controller. Okay, so I can say priority in uh, equals uh, using the autocomplete functionality provided by uh, by this control. And now I wrote my uh, my JQL directly here, and this applies to to all the other gadgets. So all this, uh, of course, all this is configurable, and you can organize your. Uh, your filters any way you want, uh, but all this allows you to build a powerful navigation experience for your um, for your users. Let's now look a bit at the other gadgets. Okay, so this uh, this was the control. Let's look at the gadgets showing content. You have here a list the list of issues. Okay, so this is what we call rich filter results gadget, and you'll notice first of all that it has several views. 
okay? So you can configure different views uh, showing different uh, different fields of your issue, issues. Typically, you will define uh, views for different project roles. Okay, maybe product people want to see some type of information, but people from management might want to see something else. And if you're doing, I don't know, time tracking, maybe then they, you want to see to, to see time tracking fields, which by the way can be summed up in the footer of the gadget. Uh, you uh, you can you have noticed probably all these visual markers. Okay, uh, from the beginning uh, you see here green team, orange team. So re you remember the the rich field, the smart filter I uh, mentioned uh, earlier. So is it called smart filter because it's more than a filter? It also can be a column in your uh, table. Okay, so this is not a real field in Jira. This is computed on the fly, it's based on our JQL, and it it is used as a visual marker in the, in the table but it can be also used in uh, statistic gadgets, okay? So this is uh, almost like a, it is like a computed uh, Jira field. It's just that you do not have to define a real field. So you do not have to be administrator, Jira administrator to define this. This is open to, to anyone who can create a dashboard. Something else you can do from the gadget is that you can update your issues in real time because all of this is real time. So this is not all about reporting. It's about an, using an operational dashboard. You can interact with your issues. You can uh, do the issue actions directly from here. So you can do transitions on your issues. This issue in particular doesn't have a component set. So I click on edit. This will open the edit screen directly here in the dashboard. I will maybe choose a component. I will update my issues, my issue, and then all the all the, the gadgets will reflect that modification. So this is how. Imagine you have use cases when maybe you groom a backlog or you 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 update your issues. Uh, so this these are the examples I wanted to show in uh, in this dashboard. Let's uh, this dashboard. Let's let's look at another example. So this dashboard is more um, reporting oriented. As you can see, you have many gadgets to choose from which can show different types of um, charts and metrics. Uh, like, I, I don't know, we have pie charts or uh, bar charts or line charts like this or gauges. So many, many types of gadgets you can combine. If you, let's look a bit at this gadget here. So this is a statistics gadgets, gadget. All our gadgets allow you to build metrics on issue counts, issue count, but also on numeric fields, such as story points or on time tracking fields. As you can see here, you are able to customize the way the values are displayed. So here I have choose to display the time tracking fields in hours and not in Jira's default format, which is weeks, days, or uh, and hours. And this you can customize. It can be in days uh, in uh, other other types of display. You can uh, define formulas. You can use formulas to display your, your data. So here we see the average business value. And here uh, there is another example. We see the maximum business values, business value in um, in the issues we have here. Of course, you can customize all these uh, all these colors uh, in a way that makes sense for you. Uh, if we look at this pie chart, uh, all the gadgets are uh, can have many types of configuration. So you, you you can customize the way they are displayed and uh, uh, different characteristics. Uh, in this, uh, for instance, in this um, pie chart, we have a view, it's my favorite view, it is called the slice bar chart. I prefer it because, uh, well, the gadget is more compact like this and takes less space in, uh, in, in the dashboard. And I can use it like a progress bar for my, uh, for my issues, okay? So I can see the issues in backlog, work in progress, validation, and done. And of course, I would combine this with the quick filters, and now I can see this uh, same status for, uh, for a particular project. All this is naturally combined with the export to PDF functionality. So remember, I was mentioning the rich filter extensions. This is uh, one of the extensions, the rich filter PDF reports. Well, all you have to do is to click on this button and the entire dashboard is exported uh, in, a, in PDF format. And now I can go through, through to, to see the data from uh, my gadgets and I can share this with people who do not necessarily have, uh, have Jira accounts. Speaking about uh, sharing, uh, there is another type of sharing, which is a uh, live sharing. Okay, imagine I select my, my filters, uh, I, I do my selection, uh, then I can generate a permalink. Okay, and this permalink will save exactly the way my quick filters and other characteristics of the dashboard, like the view selected and order of issues have been, uh, have been configured on my view. And if somebody receives this uh, permalink, imagine you send this to a colleague by email, 
when he will open the dashboard, the dashboard will be restored just the way you, just the way it was when you generated the permalink, okay, with the same quick filter selected. So uh, yeah, this is how this is how you you generally use uh, use uh, this uh, this feature. Uh, I would like now to look more at um, at an example about uh, service desks. So another extension is Rich Filter uh, Service Desk uh, dashboards. I have uh, I have mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. So this is installed on top of Rich Filters and allows you to. Uh, to use other types of values in your gadgets. For instance, here I monitor uh, I monitor several um, service desks at the same time. We have in this example Paris service desk, Boston, and Sydney service desk. And in this gadget here, we look at the uh, time to resolution uh, and we see how this uh, changed during the week. So we can see we can see trends and we can uh, we can compare. Okay, so I can we can see this type of metrics. We can also monitor. Um, several SLAs at the same time, okay? So here I look at time to, uh, to first response, the met ratio and time to resolution at the same time. And we can monitor as many SLAs as we want in parallel. Or we can look at the average uh, uh, time to, to first response and time to, to resolution. And there are other types of metrics based on SLA fields. You can combine this with quick, uh, quick filters, with dynamic filters on SLA fields, such as customer request type. So now if I click here on the some of the customer request types, I can see the metrics for those customer request types. Or I can look at the, a particular organization, okay? So we can see our dashboard for this organization, how we're doing when, when supporting this organization. Or we can monitor different, uh, different agents. Here, if I click on Eric Jones, I can see the metric of, metrics of Eric Jones. There is a little feature here called filter mode, which allows me to, to negate this filter, okay? So this is practical here because now I can see everybody uh, else. So all the other agents, agents but uh, Eric Jones, okay? So this allows me to easily compare um, uh, the metrics of different, uh, of different users with the average of the, other, of the other agents. Obviously this is naturally combined with the export to PDF. Uh, by the way, export to PDF, it's available for the entire dashboard, but also at each individual uh, gadget level. And this allows us to, to, to take snapshots of um, the way uh, our metrics uh, have, uh, have evolved. I, look to, I would like to look at one uh, more example. So this uses the uh, third extension of um, Rich Filters uh, for Jira dashboard. It's uh, the Rich Filter time tracking dashboards extension which allows you to build dashboards based on the work log. Okay, so let's look at an example. In this dashboard, I have 158 issues. And in these issues, uh, we have logged 2,549 hours. Okay, so I configure this to see it in hours. Uh, and typically, I would, uh, I would look at the, the metrics for a time period, let's say last month. And last month we have 48 issues and we logged this, uh, this amount of time. And probably I will combine, I would combine this with uh, uh, the work log authors, okay? So I would look at the work logs of these people. Imagine I'm their manager, okay? So I, I see on how many issues they have worked and the total time um, time logged on, uh, on these issues. I could combine this with project and other filters, of course. And here we see the breakdown, who has worked on which issues, how many issues and the total time logged. And here I have configured a view where I can actually see the issues and the time logged against each issue and who has logged how much time. For instance, on this issue, the first one, we have logged during last month, we have logged four hours and two hours logged by Chris and two hours uh, logged by John. And this is how I, I, I would look, uh, I would look like, uh, at this. Of course, this can be, you, you can use the idea of smart filter. I presented earlier to, to define, uh, to, so you can use smart filters to, to implement uh, the concept of team and to see how, uh, how time has, um, has been uh, logged against uh, different teams or to see how time for different activities, um, log time has, has evolved, okay? So this is everything I wanted to show in Jira. I have just a last quick example in Confluence because I mentioned this at the beginning. This is a Confluence page. Uh, you can use the same gadgets here too. You can uh, simply use the same quick filters. If you click on one particular quick filter, it will uh, update the other gadgets in real time. Okay, so this allows you to 
transform your conference pages in a powerful um, portal uh, portals for your project status, especially for people who do not necessarily use uh, Jira, like uh, in general, the, the management prefers to look at the, at the conference page. This uh, this concludes uh, a bit my uh, my presentation. So please don't hesitate to ask questions in the FIQ question uh, at the end. Now, because I talked about confluence, uh, I will let uh, I will let our colleagues from Comunardo to to tell you a bit more about uh, how you can organize your confluence pages uh, to to get the most of your uh, of your confluence. So thank you very much, and I will let uh, David uh, share his screen now. Thanks, Dan. Thanks also for the introduction. Um, we've seen a lot, of, lot, lot about JIRA in the previous minutes because JIRA is all about data and that's our need structure. But um, apparently some people also need structure in Confluence because Confluence has a page tree, which is nice, but that's it basically. And we'll like to, um, in this part of the webinar, we'll like to look into how you can achieve that. And the title of the webinar, you can read it here, is Make It Your Own, How to Personalize Confluence for Your Users. So to create a really personalized experience. Um, so, but maybe let's start with why structuring content, especially in Confluence, but in general, is important at all. Um, usually, end users want to escape information overload. You all know that. You, looking every morning in your email inbox probably uh, brings up the need for another coffee or so. <laughs> and uh, so that's why we want, want to get relevant information and not everything. Everyone has his own ways to deal with that. Um, but also specifically look, uh, looking at Confluence, um, you may want to use, or users may want to use to contribute to SEO uh, and structuring their content as easy as possible. So, but as a content owner or content creator, I have different needs. I want, I maybe want to guide users through the content, not for them to be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of content. And I also want to make sure that the content can be found through the search, because especially if you have a grown up Confluence instance, searching isn't always easy. Um, yeah, and I also want my users to, uh, to keep the content up to date easily not having outdated content. That's actually one of the main goals. And I, I definitely want to apply some guidance and control. Um, so, and everyone, and that includes you, wants nice design and low maintenance cost and maybe as much automation as possible because what you definitely want to do is save some time and rather go outside and have a coffee with your friends and dealing with Confluence pages in the evening. So, um, yes. So that's why that's why we say organizing content is important at all. Um, now, before we dig into more details, um, I have a quick poll in here, and um, yeah, you see that already. Um, I want to ask you how many pages do you have in your Confluence instance? Um, it's not very detailed, but it gives us a. Uh, I'm going to share the results afterwards. So. Um, but it gives us a good understanding of what size we are actually talking about because we are having customers with 10 users in their conference that still have lots of pages, but we are also serving customers with hundreds of thousands of users and pages and the needs are differently maybe. So um, yeah, giving it like 10 more seconds or so, I, I think we're gonna stop it. I think quite a few votes already and it's yeah, it's not, not that even, but yeah, okay, so maybe we'll just uh, stop it uh, now, thanks, and uh, let's share the, um, share the results. So you'll see, what you're seeing is that we are mostly talking of the 10,000 or 1,000 um, uh, page, pages um, you're having in a Confluence instance, which is rather big. It's not, it's not the biggest we've seen, but it's, it's pretty big. So um, thanks for sharing. I might wanna go back to the presentation. Thanks. So um, organizing content in Confluence, how you do that? Um, you can organize the content in spaces and page trees, just like, like this diagram shows you uh, that could look like so, but um, sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you need more, uh, more structure. Sometimes you have information appearing in several spaces which makes it uh, more interesting like um, here. Um, then you need, uh, you need some extra control over that. 
And maybe you need to add further information to a page or a blog post uh, that, yeah, you, you can validate maybe that information. Um, and you have that, like some examples here, characteristics of the page, what is the status of a page or what is the, re <clears throat> sorry, the relevance or who's in charge of, actually in charge of that page or that content, so stuff like that. Um, so, and we found that quite often the solution for questions like that, especially in growing instances, is called metadata. Uh, metadata, like additional data that's sitting beside the content. And we've prepared some examples to show you how that could look like and how that works. And um, I'm not going to bore you with PowerPoint slides, here, instead handing over to my colleague, Joella, who is um, having a demo instance where she could show that to you. Thank you, David. Hello, I'm really happy to show you a real life use case of our metadata app, which is inspired by the use of metadata inside Communardo and also on some of our customers. I will share my screen. So uh, imagine that you have a lot of projects uh, in your company and you'd like to have an overview, let's say, of all the projects and you'd like to see all the characteristics of your projects in one only page. And this is possible uh, because of metadata. First, let's imagine that you are in a space and you have one page for each project and these pages uh, have all the relevant information for your project. And as we all may know, each all the projects may have some similar characteristics and uh, we can define these characteristics with metadata. In this page here, for example, we are in a, a project called Remind Me Project and here we have all the information about the project and in this bubble icon here, we have the metadata. So we can see here that we have a set with metadata called project and it has all the fields or characteristics of the project inside that are project department that in this case is software development for this project. We have the starting date of our project, the ending date, the location of the project, we have a budget for our project, a status and also the project leader. So here we can see all the relevant characteristics of this project. If you want to edit these details here, for example, the budget will change or maybe uh, the status will change and the project will finish, then you can just edit the metadata here. And here in the left side bar of the page, you have all the fields where you can put uh, the information or maybe change the information like changing the status here from ongoing to finished or maybe changing the budget and so on. Uh, as you see here, we can uh, have different type of fields in metadata. So you can have users there, you can have fields where you can put uh, links or you can have some drop downs uh, and so on. Uh, if you want to also display all this information of your project, so all the values that you have in these fields here, you can embed the macro inside your page like this one here, the display metadata macro. And when you update the page, you can see this table here that shows an overview of all the fields and values. So you can see all the characteristics of this project within the page. Now let's assume that we have a lot of pages uh, within our confluence that uh, each page represents a different project and we want to have an overview of all the projects that we have. Then let's go in this project details sheet page where I have embedded a macro that metadata app offers and uh, be this macro allows us here to see an overview of all the projects that we have in our company, like uh, managing requirements project, remind me project, uh, sample project one, and so on. And beside the list, you can see for each project also the characteristics of uh, the project. Like you can see the department of each project, the starting date, ending date, the location, budget, and so on. 
um, beside of having this overview here, what you else can do is adding filters. Like imagine that you have a long list of projects and you'd like to only see the projects where the department is product, then you can add a filter. You can interact with the macro here and immediately add a filter like project department. I want to see all the projects that have the department product. And the list will be filtered and I will see all the projects that have these characteristics. So the department uh, product. I can also combine it with something else like uh, location. I would like to see all the projects uh, in the product department that have location Dresden. Then I can also filter for location. Dresden. And I will have here a report, an overview of all the projects that have the department product and have the location Dresden. Uh, in the same way, you can also create other reports uh, depending on the complex needs that your users have. Uh, another thing I would like to add is that uh, you also have the opportunity here to immediately create a new project. Uh, but how we can do this, uh, for each Confluence template, uh, we can assign a set as the default one so that uh, when you create a page from a certain template, the metadata set will be there and the metadata values will be there by default. Uh, we have added here the Confluence macro create by template. And if you go here, create new project, you can immediately create a project page that will by default have these metadata uh, fields here. And here you can, of course, select your values. Let's say that we are creating a test project. And then we have the opportunity here to select the department of our project that, let's say it is marketing, a starting date today, an ending date that may be uh, after two weeks or something else. We can choose a location. Uh, we can put a budget here and we can also select a status that is uh, ongoing because it started today. And we can also uh, put a leader here, a project leader. And you can publish your page. So now you have created a new project in your Confluence that has its own characteristics inside, which you can see here again. And if we go in the project details sheet page, I will see that the new project that I created, the test project is uh, added here in my list. Um, you have the opportunity to create this page, uh, not only on a space, but also globally. So you can create metadata fields and set within a space. And this metadata can be used only within the page that this space has, but you can also create them globally and use them everywhere in your Confluence. So it depends uh, how you want to organize or structure your Confluence. Thank you. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. I would like to hand it over to Flora now. Thank you very much for your presentation and obviously, obviously thank you to all of you for attending. So now we'll go to the Q&A session. So um, I've seen a few questions. So I will ask um, Fede, uh, one of the questions of uh, Raju Kadam. Uh, the question is, which field is uh, it used to capture this information, profit or out of the box, release information? So it's about the release view. And hello, thank you very much, Flora. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for attending. I'm Fede Banotti, as Flora said, and I'm the support, uh, customer support guy here at Dacer. Well, uh, for this question, uh, when you when you install profiles and you go to the release page, you will get the information out of the box. What does it mean out of the box? That information, it's already in Jira. It's the information that you have already entered uh, in your versions. Uh, in your versions. 
So whenever you, you go to the release page in Profiles, you'll get all that information already. You don't have to enter anything or create any more uh, fields from Profiles. I hope that that answers your question. Thank you very much, Flora. Back to Great, you. thank you, Fede. Um, so now it would be um, Dan and Mike and uh, guys, there is uh, one question for you from uh, Celine. Uh, there is actually two, two questions from, from Celine. So the first one is for which filter is it possible to perform cascade filter? Uh, thank you for thank you for the question. Um, uh, it, it is in fact the same question uh, Celine explained here. So it's about uh, how to make the dynamic filters more contextual. Imagine you have a dynamic filter on field one and you select one option and then you would like to have the dynamic filter two to show only the options that exist in the issues that uh, have been filtered. So uh, the dynamic filters are already contextual, okay? Uh, they show you the options that uh, actually exist in your uh, issues. Imagine you have a Jira instance with 10,000 assignees, but in your project you have only three assignees. If you add a dynamic filter on assignee, then uh, you'll see only the three assignees that actually exist in your, uh, in your issues, not the entire 10,000 user base, which would be irrelevant. So this is already... Um, uh, this already makes the dynamic filters contextual. Now, it's true that what Celine describes would be even better. Uh, it will make all the other fields even more contextual uh, if, you, if you work with several uh, fields at the same time. Uh, this is something we're considering, uh, and it, it might be implemented in the future. Currently, uh, this, is, uh, this is how we decide what dynamic, uh, dynamic filters to, uh, to show. Perfect. So I think, yeah, Celine just said, exactly. <laughs> so she seems pretty satisfied with your answer. Thank you very much, Dan. So it will be now um, David and Joella turn. So even if you answered um, um, to Raju, if you don't mind to answer it out loud so to everyone. So I think the question... Doo -doo -doo, um, yeah, the question was... Uh, ah, yeah, thank you, David. The, 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 uh, I marked it already as answered. That's why it's not wow. nowhere on the list. And the question was about the theme that we're using in the Confluent that you that we showed um, in the demo that Joella showed. Um, so the theme is uh, it's a custom theme. So we did uh, it's customized for our needs, um, but it's based on an on a uh, on an app from a different uh, marketplace vendor who's not in today's webinar. The app is called Enterprise Theme. So if you look it up in the marketplace, you'll you'll be able to find it. But I guess it'll look different than what you just saw. So <laughs> I hope that helps. Thank you very much, David. So another question uh, for you, Fede. Um, so the question is, what's the difference between role set in profile and role set in the project settings? Thank you very much for that question. Well, the answer is really simple. Uh, they're the same roles. Uh, these roles that you can change with Profiles full cooperations are the same roles from your Jira projects. The only thing is that Profiles provides you the help in order to arrange those roles uh, with full cooperations. And that's it. They're the same. That's the, that's the answer. I hope <laughs> I, I did answer that. Thank, Thank you. you. Another question for you, Dan. Uh, do I need a separate license to use the rich filter gadget in Confluence? Uh, no, you do not need. Those gadgets you've seen in my example were uh, external gadgets in Confluence. So with your, um, uh, you, with your license for Jira, you can uh, use the gadget in as many Confluence instances uh, as you wish. Uh, without needing any any other license, I would just like to also answer another question. Is not to mark here for which plugin for each ad is, but uh, I know it's for each filter. Somebody asks about um, uh, when this will be available in the cloud. So yeah. because uh, in my in my slide I mentioned that uh, it is available currently for server mm -hmm. and data center. We are currently working on this. Okay, so this is our major uh, milestone, our next major milestone. We we working. Uh, we are fully focused on this. It it will still take uh, several months, um, but uh, this is this is what uh, what we want to, to to provide next. So don't hesitate to write to support, and uh, if you want to be put on the waiting list, and we can notify you as soon as we we have a first version. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so maybe one or, or two question more, and then we will answer uh, you by email. 
um, because I don't want to, um, to take uh, too much of your time. Uh, so it's a question for Comunardo. Um, can I create pages with metadata field values already pre-filled? Uh, yes, uh, you can do that. Uh, we have a feature called default values and the admin can uh, define a value for a field so he can prefill it and in the moment that the user uh, will create a page that will have them some uh, fields, some of the fields, if it is decided by admin like that, will be prefilled with values. Great. Thank you very much, Joela. Um, I just answered the question of Raju asking if uh, he can get the slides. So actually, we're going to send the video. Um, but if you want the, the slide deck, um, I, will I will be happy to send it uh, to you. Obviously, I will need the, um, uh, the permission of um, my uh, colleagues from Cominado and Cotilab. So we will talk uh, between us and I uh, will definitely um, uh, send it to you. And uh, not, we are not all from Spain, <laughs> only Dazer. Uh, Coty Labs uh, is a mix, I, I would say, but uh, Dan is based in Paris and Cominardo, they are based in, uh, in, in Germany. <laughs> and, um, and what else? Uh, so I think we've got another question for you, Fede. Um, so from Andrew, uh, on the profile screen, is it possible to have a different number of columns than three? Well, uh, th that's, that's also really nice that you asked that question because you can add as many columns as uh, fields you have in, G uh, in Jira or in profiles. No, not in Jira, sorry, in profiles. Uh, you, you can add those profiles, uh, uh, project fields, uh, straight in the, in the list view and you can uh, arrange the order, you can delete columns, you can add columns, and you can export those columns as, as you like. Uh, it's really nice and it's really useful in order to have all the information that you have created in profiles and with profiles. Great, and um, I think there is one last question. Um, so it's talking about Jira Cloud, so I don't know if it was for us or for uh, which filter. It's, uh, I think regarding the time it may be for us, uh, is there an expected date for when the gadget for Jira Cloud will be available? I think it's for us, Fede. Okay, yes, uh, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't unmute myself. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. so, but, uh, I think it happens. Well, uh, well uh, all these, uh, the, we are working well with, with a lot of different uh, features. We're trying to e e equilibrate uh, what features you have available in server and what features you have right now available in cloud. Uh, right now, there are two different experiences. And as I said before, we're working in order to, to equilibrate them, you know, and to, and to have uh, the same experience in both installations. Uh, we don't know yet when this is going to be available, but we're going to try uh, to release uh, a nice cloud version uh, in, the, in the last stages of this year. You will be in, uh, notified and, and we'll keep you posted on this. Uh, it's going to be really nice because uh, we, we've all already are seeing what it, what it can be done and it's going to be great. So we'll keep you posted. Thank you very much, Fede. So, um, yeah, so the video will be sending to all of you uh, guys. Um, so I think we're done here. I don't know if you, um, David or Dan, you want to add something um, on your side or if... No, can... thank you. Thank you very much. It's good for me. I'd also thank like you. to thank say thank you thanks for attending. For, yeah, thanks for attending. Thanks for hosting this. Uh, uh, and I wish you a great evening then. Thank you very much, David. And thank you to Raju for his feedback. Uh, we are really happy for um, yeah doing uh, with multiple vendors. We realize how overwhelmed it can be sometimes to get a one hour uh, demo of one product. So we will definitely continue this uh, kind of session. So thank you again to all of you. And please do not hesitate to reach us uh, in private if you need anything around our apps. Have a great evening to all of you. Take care. Bye bye.